Hello friends and welcome back to my crafty space where I share my memory keeping projects and processes with all of you. If this is your first time here, hello and welcome. My name is Crystal and I am super excited that you are all here today. Today we are jumping back into the traveler's notebook that I've been working on for a trip my parents took to Arizona. Uh, we have already completed the title page and six of these spreads on the inside. Today we are going to do another three of these spreads. I will um, put a link to the first video up at the up at the eye in case you guys want to go back and catch up on the pages that we've already done. So uh, before we get started on putting everything together here, I'm first going to take you over to the computer and show you how. I altered some digital products to uh, work inside of the Traveler's Notebook. Um, I'm also working through this entire album trying to primarily use the new feature craft travel release, which is called Tourist Mode, is the main kit, and then there are also two uh, Traveler's Notebook papers that are called Travel Notes. So that is primarily what I'm using here. Let's hop on over to the computer so I can show you guys inside of Photoshop how I altered some things and then we'll come back over here and put these spreads together. Okay friends, so before we get to work putting together today's Traveler's Notebook spreads, I first want to take you over to Creative Cloud on my computer to show you guys how I altered some of the cards and papers in order to create the elements for today's spreads. So. We are first going to get started by working on uh, this one right here. So for this spread, I was working with a picture that had a lot more, uh, it was a lot wider than it was tall. So my concern when I was going to crop this photo into a full page photo, which would have been, would have been four and a quarter by eight and a quarter, would have, was that it was going to cut off too much of the view, right? And that is really what makes this photo just spectacular is the view. So instead of making my photo, you know, whoops, instead of making it, you know, this big, instead I decided to crop it at eight and a half inches wide by six inches tall. And what that did is it's going to make this photo go over both pages of my spread with a little bit of room at the top to add some interest and a title. So let me show you guys how I made the papers up at the top. First of all, I wanted to create a traveler's notebook sized paper because I know that once I have the paper made, I can literally just cut it in half in order to put the two pieces up at the top. So um, we're going to make a traveler's notebook spread. Now I, not new, I don't want a new thing. I want to just open. Now what I did is I went into some of my older feature craft products or digital products and I opened up the Weekends R4 digital kit and grabbed this card out. I like the horizontal lines and I also like how they are spaced closer together. They're thinner and they're spaced closer together than the stripe pattern in the current kit. Then I did open up the stripe pattern from the current kit, which was this 4x6 pattern right here. And I used my color picker and my paint bucket tool to pick up the colors from this card here and paint it into the card from the Weekends R4. And basically all I did is I went like red, replaced the red. And yellow, let's grab the yellow, yellow replaces the yellow and so on. So it's just giving this card the tones of the... Um, tourist mode kit. So once I did that, what I ended up with, let me get rid of this. What I ended up with was this card right here. So there it is in the current kit colors. Now to turn this into a traveler's notebook paged paper, all that I did was copy the entire card itself and paste it onto my canvas, that four and a quarter by eight and a quarter canvas. Then I enlarged it so it would fill up the entire piece and I placed it up at the top. Now it's got this, um, 
you know, actually that really doesn't matter. We're just going to leave that. So then what I did is I copied this layer here. So select layer one and copy it. And then I pasted a second one. So now here is where things get a little bit interesting is that you've got a, or we've got a crop line here at the top. So what I'm going to do is take my eraser and make sure that second layer is the one that I have selected. I'm just going to erase that crop line. So pretty easy peasy here. And then we're going to move it down. And as you can see, it won't go all the way to the bottom without uh, having some white show through. So I'm just going to put it, you know, right in the middle. I will select the second layer, the one that we just moved, copy that one, paste it again. And I want this one to go on Let's see, I want it to go underneath that second layer, right? No, I want it to go on top. So I wanted this layer to be the top, the topmost one. So then I can move it down to the bottom and my page is fully filled in. So I'm just going to merge all those layers together and that gives me my pattern paper. So this I will print out on plain white cardstock and cut into two pieces in order to use as the background for my spread up here. Now, the last thing I did for this one, um, I really loved the getaway journaling card that came in the kit. So it looks like this. And uh, what I wanted to do was to use the get and away to create my title up at the top of this page. So to do this, and I also didn't want to cut up my physical one because I love it so much and I want to be able to use it in another project, maybe on a project life spread or something like that in the future. So for, for this project, what I'm going to do is use the digital card to grab the different letters that I want in order to print them off and use them. So I'm going to take my marquee tool up here on the left sidebar, and I'm just going to draw a box around each individual letter. So we're going to start with the G. We'll draw our box around it. And then I'm going to right click and layer via whichever, copy or cut. I'm just gonna cut because that way I can see, right, I can see which letter I have done or have or don't have done. So I'll click back on my background piece again, grab the marquee tool, and now I'm going to do the E and we go on and on and on until we get all the letters that we want. So let me just get one more and then I'll show you how I added it onto that page. What I ultimately will do with these um, is to print them on, I end up printing them on photo paper because I want them to be really saturated. So all I'm doing here is I have those three letters selected, I copied them, and I'm going to paste them on this page. So I will print these off on photo paper to make them super saturated. But something I wanted to point out to you here is when I copied those letters over here, I can already tell that they are going to be too big on this page um, because the, like this one is perfect, but I would not be able to fit four on the other side. So what I did is I just reduced the size until I felt like I could get a fourth one on here. In fact, what I could do is just take the T, copy the, nope. <laughs> not that. I want to just take the T and copy it and paste it and then I can add it to this group. So now I can see what it would look like if I had four letters on here as if I was doing away. And then I can reduce the size down to where I like it. Okay. Unselect or hit enter and unselect it and I can delete this. Gosh darn it. <laughs> I can delete this one right here and now I've got the get. So these I actually made even smaller than those up there, but I just wanted to like to show you that I did end up having to resize the letters in order to have them fit on here really nicely. Um, so I wouldn't have been able to use the physical card anyway. The letters would have been too big. So that is how I got the pieces for this first spread. Also, I am going to add this stamp onto my photo, but I'm going to do that once it's printed. So the stamp right here is in like, it's the same size as what the physical stamp will be. Um, if I did not like the scale of it, I could have enlarged it or made it smaller, whichever, and just printed it straight on my photo. But I want a chance to actually use my stamp set, so 
I am going to do that once it is on my desk. Okay, let's move on to the second spread. So this second spread, I drew inspiration from this card right here, which I super love. Like this is also, this is just one of my favorite cards in the whole kit. Um, now this is sized four by six. So if I show it to you at print size, you'll see that those tags are really small. What I wanted to do was to create some kind of tag interactive portion on this page. Originally, I was thinking of doing some kind of like tag book that I could just store in the album. So it's like an album in the album, which sounded kind of fun. Um, but I ultimately decided to just use three of them and resize them to put them on a page with photos on top. So it's going to be like this. Then I'm going to stitch a vellum pocket onto my pattern paper that I will show you guys how I made. And then those will just slip right inside of the vellum pocket right there. So let me show you how I made the background paper and how I got these tags to look the way they do. Also, before I move on to that, um, the main photo for this page is a full size photo. So four and a quarter by eight and a quarter. I'm going to add this stamp after I print the photo. Again, I just um, use the digital one and put it on the picture to make sure that the scale was, was okay. When I knew the scale was okay, I decided I would print the photo, add the stamp later. If I had not liked the scale and wanted it bigger, then I could have done that and printed the stamp already on the photo. So. Okay, so let's start with let's start with the background paper, which by the way, I did decide to make part of it just like plain blue because I felt like that helped the tags to pop out. If this would have been full stripe the whole time, I felt like they just would have blended in too much. It would have been too busy. So let's do the page first. So I'm going to open up the four and a quarter by eight and a quarter canvas and um, nope. And what I'm going to use to create the stripe at the top is just the four by six stripe card. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees so it's on its side. Then I can select it all and copy it, paste it directly onto my canvas here. And we're going to enlarge it so it fills up the entire space and move it up to the top. So that gives us the stripe portion. Now for the... Um, Let's close out of that. We don't need that anymore. For the blue portion, I knew that I wanted my, actually, I can't remember how far down you are. Right, you're an inch and a half. I wanted this top portion to be an inch and a half uh, wide so that the rest of my photo, so these tags are each six inches long. They're two and a half inches wide by six inches long. And, um, I wanted the stripe to begin above those above those tags, so an inch and a half up. So what I did over here is I took a guideline and I dragged it down to an inch and a half. Once I had that in place, I then used my color picker tool over here to pick up this blue color, which I think is the right blue. Let me make sure. Yep. I picked up the blue color and then I grabbed my rectangle tool. I made sure that my fill was the blue color that I wanted. My stroke is set to none. And then I just drew a box that went from that inch and a half all the way down to the bottom of the page, hit enter, and then I could merge those layers together and get rid of this guideline. And that is my pattern paper. So that's pretty easy. The, pad or the vellum pocket I will add once we get over to the table. Now the tags are a little bit trickier. So what I did for these is I used my marquee tool. I started down in the bottom right corner and just dragged a box all the way around that tag shape and then cut it out. So layer via cut. And I did this for all three. I did it for one, two, and three. Then once I had those layers all made, I knew I wanted my um, tag shape. It's actually, sorry, it's two and a quarter. I wanted my tag shape to be two and a quarter wide by six inches tall. So I created that canvas on a separate page. Then I grabbed that tag shape and pasted it directly onto that new canvas and just sized it so that it filled up as much of this space as possible. So I just need to reduce the size just a little tiny bit 
So once it's printed, it will be just slightly under six inches, but I'm okay with that. And then that gave me my tag. So my idea for this, and I can actually show you, there it is at print size, right? So my idea for this is to print out a photo that will fill up the entire white space here, but I'm going to use a craft knife to cut around the numbers. So the numbers will go on top of the photo, um, which is why I'm leaving the numbers on there. And then, you know, the photo will be on top. So to fit a photo in there, I printed them. Um, it's a little bit weird. They're two inches wide by uh, one or sorry, 3.9 inches tall. Um, that's what I wanted in order for them to fit in here with an even amount of white border around them. So that is essentially what these are going to look like. Okay, so that is all. The, those are all the pieces for spread number two. Um, spread number three, which is the third and final one that we're going to work on today, is a much easier one. So for this one, I printed this photo at the four and a quarter by eight and a quarter. And then uh, this is a traveler's notebook paper from the uh, Travel Notes collection by Future Craft. And the original one looks like this. Now, I wanted mine to just say destination and then for the rest of it to be journaling. So what I did, just because this wasn't like, there wasn't a departure or, departure or arrival or mode of transportation, like none of that really made sense for the photos I wanted to pair this with. So I grabbed my marquee tool and I'm just going to drag a square from the top of that arrow to somewhere in the middle of the text box. And then I'm going to right click, layer via copy, and drag this up until we are just under the destination bubble there. I will hit enter and merge it all together. And now this is the pattern paper that I will be using for my spread itself. Then the last thing I did was to crop two photos down to an inch and a half wide by two and a half inches tall. I have two of them so that they will fit in here, you know, side by side, let's say and then we can add journaling up at the top. Okay, so all of the photos for these pages will be printed on photo paper and all of the patterned pages will be printed on plain white cardstock. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those elements all printed out and then I will meet you over at the table to assemble these spreads together. Okay, so now we're back at the desk and ready to put this thing together. So the first thing I'll do is take the uh, supplies that I put together out of their little baggie and we'll get started on the first spread. Now I pulled out this journaling card right here. It's from the um, physical kit there and I'm just showing you that that is where the title came from and as you can see right there they are slightly smaller than the uh, tiles on that card itself. So I printed the stripe page there at the full um, four and a half or four and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So then I just cut that thing right in half so I could use half on one side and half on the other. So I pull over another uh, traveler's notebook size paper so that I can make sure to adhere these things at the correct um, at the correct spot so that they are the right size. I add adhesive to the top of the photo, and then uh, this one I'll have to lift the photo up and add some adhesive to the bottom of that paper as well. And then the next one I'll just automatically do the bottom of the paper and the top of the photo. And using that, the uh, full size paper underneath, I'll just line it up and stick it all together so that it is, you know, good to go. Once I have that done, the next thing I'm going to do is add my title, which is that the word up there, the getaway word. Um, you know what? Nope, I'm going to stamp first. So I showed you guys in the, on the computer how I wanted to add the stamp set that says, um, what does it say? Like, love this view. Um, is that what it says? Love this view. Something like that. <laughs> something like that anyway so I want to put that up in the in the blue sky there so I did go ahead and prime it by just inking it up and stamping it a couple of times onto some spare paper and then um, once I am happy with the impression I inked it up and then put it on the photo there oh you know what? it says check out this view that's it that's what it says 
So I stamped it on my photo and the impression is not as great as I wanted it to be. So I debated just leaving it there just like that and then ultimately decided to just pull over some um, sticker paper here. This is white matte sticker paper and to stamp the sentiment right on there, uh, cut it out and then just adhere it onto the photo where my... Um, where that stamp is over there already. So these I'm just gonna fussy cut out and then I will add it to the photo. I love using sticker paper for embellishments like this, especially in traveler's notebooks because it helps cut down on your bulk. Uh, I will definitely link up the sticker paper that I use in the description down below in case you wanna try using sticker paper for some of your projects. Now we'll go ahead and do the title. So when I originally designed this, I, I couldn't remember if I kept those white lines or not. So when I had them all lined up there, I remembered that I, in fact, remove all of the white from around them. So I just went ahead, cut off all the excess white, and then I will get these adhered down. So the way I'm going to do this to make sure that everything lines up correctly is to first do the right hand side where it says away. Then I'm going to line those pages up directly in the middle of the other page, the page right next to it, put the E on there, and then I can add the rest of those uh, letters up at the top and everything is in a straight line there. That worked out pretty nice for me. I added a little yellow uh, asterisk there, a puffy asterisk from the add-on uh, sticker sheet. Love that sticker sheet. And then I went through my ephemera bits to find some some places or some like little journaly bits where I could uh, offer my parents a place to jot something down, even if it's just the date or the location. So I found that little location geotag spot, uh, which is the second one of three. So we used one already. This is me using the second one. And I'm also going to put a cactus on there as well. Um, in addition to a tag. So it just gives it like this little cluster feel. I debated like, oh, do I put this here or do I just let this photo be the photo? Cause it is a pretty magnificent photo, but ultimately I do decide to add the embellishment cluster on there. Um, I just like that it fills in the space and I like that it gives them a place to write down the location where this photo was actually taken. All right, you guys, so uh, my camera cut out there and I didn't realize it and I finished all three spreads. So um, what I'm gonna do is show you guys what I did uh, so that you can at least see it. And I'm, I'm really sorry about that. I can't believe it. That is the most frustrating thing in the entire world is when you think you're filming and then you're not and you obviously can't go back and redo it, so. All right, let's show you guys what I did here. So this page ended up, I did end up putting the um, embellishment down in this left corner. Then I made an epic mistake and I taped this page onto this side without realizing it. So then I had to rip this off of the page, put the right one on and then put this one back down. Now, um, when I do these traveler's notebooks, almost, 100% of the time, they end up busting at the seams. So um, I will end up taking out the staples and then I will stitch this book together once I have all the pages complete. So, but what I can show you is that I, so I, I taped it over onto the left side and then I rounded out the corners and then, then I realized the mistake that I had made. So I tore it off, put it over here. I feel like you can't even really tell without my telling you that the corners are rounded in the middle. Oh well, c'est la vie, we're gonna be okay. So that's how this one turned out. On the next page, I went ahead and I stamped this um, You Are Here from the Tourist Mode stamp set. Then I took those tags that I made on the computer, I cut them all out, and then I used my exact, not an exact knife, my craft knife, my We Are Memory Keepers craft knife, to cut around the edge of the numbers. So then the numbers could come up and I could slip my photo down inside and tape it on top. But because those are cut out of the 
cardstock, there was adhesive showing through where the, um, the negative space was on the back. So I took all of these tags and I, I put a different uh, background paper, not background paper, a different pattern paper on the background. So those, so there's no stickiness and they're all just nice and ready to go. Once I had that done, I pulled out some vellum and my sewing machine and I just stitched a little, this is two and a half inches wide piece of vellum at the bottom to make a pocket. And then these three tags slip right into that pocket for storage. So then they can be pulled out or they can stay in there and they look pretty cool. Uh, last thing I did was just add this Luxby Adventurous um, die cut to the front of that pocket and then I called this page done. This one was really labor intensive so I'm super bummed that the footage is gone but that's okay. It turned out great so that's all that matters right? And then the last page was a fairly easy one. I put the two pictures over onto this uh, paper right here so there's space for her for my parents to write in if they choose. And then for the photo on the right, I just added a couple of um, ephemera pieces and clustered them up here in the middle of the page and called that good as well. So <laughs> that's all the pages for today. Um, I will be back again next Saturday to put the next set or the next three, I believe I have six more spreads to go. So we will do the next three next week. In the meantime, I do have a couple of other videos scheduled to come your way. So some story albums, a story kit crush, project life, and more. So stay tuned for those. Um, until then, I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. Uh, if, if you liked this movie, this movie, you guys, I'm losing it. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up down below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Any of the products or the links that I mentioned I will have in that description box down below and until next time I hope you guys have a great day. I'll catch you all in the next video. <laughs> Bye. We'll